so thanks for the introduction. I have my uh, a few other sheets to see. Well, Thomas already told you some things that are here on the sheet. Um, Dennis Doakers, uh, yeah, from the Netherlands, and um, mainly in my current role here. Uh, well, I'm a sort of worldwide promoter of canned wines, and uh, not for particular cans, but for the product in general, because I think it's uh, well. It's a very nice and cool and future-proof uh, product. Um, let's see. Yeah, here you see some pictures of me in real life, so not in theory. So uh, yeah, I make vlogs, I blog, I am a buyer and advisor for a Dutch uh, import company also. Uh, do some other competitions and, uh, well, blog uh, a lot. Um, well, and there at the right side, you see me as the wine can guy. Um, that's why, yeah, that's my role for today. Uh, and like Thomas said, I'm also an international uh, uh, yeah, uh, ambassador of the International Kent Wine Competition in California. That's a competition all about Kent wines and all about grape-based Kent wines. And it's the, it will be the third year. Uh, and what I do there is that I interview and I uh, attract all the new brands. And eventually, uh, I started last year and we had uh, about uh, fi uh, yeah, more than 50% more entries uh, last year than the year before. So that's also something that you see that uh, Kent Wines is really growing. Um, again, let's make an inter-ethnic session. You will all have wines in your glasses there and well, just taste them, don't wait for me. And let's compare it all. And you have wines from Portugal, from, uh, uh, from Spain and from Brazil. Uh, there are also sweet sparkling wines in there, so maybe they're not your, your taste or whatever, your preference, but uh, eventually, well, Brazil is also another market, but maybe we get into that in a few minutes. So the wine can guy. What I also do is uh, that I'm an, uh, a matchmaker for some uh, wineries or some Kent uh, produ uh, producers, Kent's produ uh, producers, and then I, 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 well, obviously the word says it already, I matchmake those uh, parties. So. Somebody needs wine or somebody needs a can or whatever. And I do that for, uh, well, a lot of, uh, I have done that for a lot of brands. Um, and as you can see here on the, on the little drawing, well, canned wines are everywhere these days. Uh, I had a whole full line of, uh, well, of discussion points, but as you can hear, my voice is not that optimal today. So I need to adjust that because otherwise I'm not able to talk anymore tomorrow. Uh, so what did I do? I just, well, put on the, the, the basics and the important things. And eventually, if you have, have any other questions, please assist, uh, well, please be so free to, uh, well, to, to put them here in, uh, in front of me. So first, we're gonna talk about some success stories, and that's all, well, also quality of the wine, but eventually the whole package, so, or the whole can in this, in this case. So it's all about uh, marketing-wise, uh, how do they do the social media, how do they, uh, well, make a story and, well, some other things, but I will come to that later on. Um, well, then we have some figures. History of Kent Wines, because a lot of people think, well, Kent Wines, yeah, that's from a f few years ago, but no, it's from the 20s of the last century. So that's also something uh, to remember. But some sheets and, of course, some photos will be uh, on the sheets in a few moments. And eventually, why Kent Wine? Uh, why should you do that? Why should it be uh, maybe one of your... Uh, yeah, products in your product range, because it can be also, well, obviously be in your range next to your bottles. And marketing with a meaning, that's also something, uh, a very important phrase that I will uh, well emphasize later. Uh, and eventually millennials. Uh, the speakers before me also, uh, yeah, did some words about millennials, and that's, uh, well, the main target group of this product, but of course, uh, people who just want to drink less uh, also could have a can. It's not 100% millennial uh, based, but that's the, that's the target group to make it all easy. So some success stories of wines. Well, I've got them in front of me here. There are, well, maybe more success stories on wines, but, well, if I took, uh, well, five or six more, then we would be here all day. So uh, I took some wines from, uh, from Portugal. Um, from Kenyu, those are a white wine and a red one. I took a nice wine uh, from uh, uh, Barcelona, from Spain, that was originally only uh, available in the US. So 
the two girls that I know, they launched the project, uh, the project maybe two years ago, and eventually they only put it on the US market. And why? Because the US market is the biggest market of canned wines. UK is the second, and eventually uh, it will come to the, to the rest of the world. Um, these little ones are from uh, Brazil. They are sparkling, but they're sparkling sweet. Um, so, uh, yeah, just be, no just be notified about that before you uh, taste the other ones. Uh, the rosé one, I forgot to mention, that's uh, also a sparkling one, uh, Tempranillo-based. And as you can see here already, there are also different formats. You also have a smaller one, but I don't have it with me today. Uh, yeah, so the, the first one that's on my sheet is uh, Gateo. That's a, a, yeah, a, white, a, a white wine from Portugal. And this is a very good example because um, eventually you have two kinds of cans, I always say. You have uh, a lot of uh, young entrepreneurs that would make a brand and then they source their wine from somewhere else, from Austria or from Spain. But you also have wineries that are... Um, well, obviously making their wines in a bottle. And, uh, well, this is a pretty good example of a winery that eventually, well, canned their wine that is already in a bottle. Um, and eventually, well, they have, like all those other cans that are in front of me, very good social media, uh, very good branding. Uh, that's also one of the advantages, of course, of a, of, a, of a canned wine. It's 360 degrees branding. If you have a, a bottle, you can only have a label or, well, put something on the, on the front or on the back. Well, here you see some examples of how they do it, of course. Uh, yeah, and this, is, this one is also available uh, on... Does it still work? Yeah. This one is also available at uh, the Air Portugal, at the airliner. Um, that's, that's something you, you, we have seen in the past, but, uh, well, it's obviously, uh, well, maybe, hope, I hope it will, uh, will increase. Um, yeah, these are uh, the, the second and the third wine that I brought with me, also from Portugal. Um, the red one, well, that, that's obviously from Spanish uh, grapes, but the white one is really uh, authentic. It's really, uh, well, por uh, Portugal-based uh, grapes. Um, another thing that I uh, should uh, emphasize is that, of course, a can is 100% oxygen closed, so not every grape variety, and that is something that I, uh, well, that I uh, first put in the normal presentation, but it's not in this shorter one. Uh, not every grape variety is suitable for a can, of course, because it's, uh, well, like I said, it's 100% oxygen free. Um, but I have some sheets later on that will emphasize why you uh, should can a wine. And like I said, please, well, taste all the wines. I'm not going to uh, do it uh, here in, uh, in general. So here we have another, uh, well, another drawing of their social media campaign. So beachy, outside, um, well, really when it's nice weather. Uh, fourth one is, uh, is the one from uh, Barcelona. Um, and they, uh, well, they make uh, uh, sparkling Tempranillo. Uh, and it's, yeah, Cool Vino, and they really say, well, Cool Vino would just, well, uh, start the new normal, because they started this uh, during the, the COVID uh, pandemic. And, well, as we speak, it's available in Spain, and they, uh, well, are very enthusiastic, uh, two girls, and they really are, uh, well, they're willing to conquer the European market uh, further. But, uh, well, they uh, also, like I said in my introduction, they uh, introduced it only first in the US market. So that is uh, very nice, I think. And the last three ones are the sparkling ones. They're from Brazil. Um, they're only uh, available on the uh, market in Brazil. Um, well, they're very typical, I think. Um, of course, from marketing perspective, maybe, well, not for the European market, but I would say in, uh, in Brazil, it's, uh, it's booming. So, uh, well, like my uh, previous uh, colleague said, well, it's also a way of how you, um, how you look at things, of course. Like uh, bulk wine, it's, uh, it's a sort of a bad word. And that's also something, well, I experience uh, when I talk to people about cans. They say, well, yeah, wine needs to be in a bottle. Yeah, well, that's very uh, old school, of course. Um, and eventually it all starts with, well, good wine. Uh, and uh, what's good wine? And well, that's depending on your consumer, of course. 
So let's open your eyes for a whole new world. It's a sort of phrase from the Aladdin uh, Disney movie, but I'm not going to sing, uh, sing it today. Um, some, um, yeah, some figures, because Kent Wine, in my, in my opinion, is part of a bigger group of adult beverages. It's about all oh, ready to drink, right? So uh, you get the cocktails, um, hard seltzers, and eventually wine in a can. And here are some figures. Here, oh, here is an, uh, another chart that uh, yeah that states uh, where eventually the whole RTD will will go to. Well, it's not my chart, so well you can ask me things about it, but I'm I'm not an expert on this. But this is something they well uh, think would happen. Um, my, yeah. And here are some figures about uh, the size and the and the, and the growth. It it was uh, yeah it was in the last last year. They obviously you see that hard seltzers is really booming, but eventually that's that's not wine or whatever. And but wine in the can is eventually in the US. This is is getting pretty big also in the UK. Um, here is something uh, on the history of canned wines. Let me just because get closer to the screen. Yeah, eventually the the first wines were introduced in the late 30s of the last century, um, and they were not those cans that uh, we used to now because they had sort of uh, screw caps on there. And uh, eventually it evolved, but uh, those wines we have now in the can are all, well, generally fresh, but not in those days. In those days they were all uh, fortified, uh, Moscadel, Port, all heavy stuff. Um, there were also French wines in there because people always will ask me, yeah, okay, but what kinds of wines were there? Yeah, also wine, uh, wines from the Bordeaux, for instance. Uh, and eventually, um, yeah, the in the in the in the late 40s another package came, another package form. But uh, well, it all got, got really well into the into the backside of of marketeers and uh, in general of the wine uh, of, the, of the wine community. And how did they look? How do, did they uh, well? How did those cans look eventually? Well, uh, like this. So here you can see that uh, uh, well, they were more like uh, well canned bottles. Um, and they were also on airlines uh, these days. So uh, that's an effect we see now. So history, uh, history, uh, well, comes again. Uh, why wine? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, why wine in a can? Well, because it's, uh, of course, uh, this is, a, by the way, this is a wine brand from, from France, really a traditional, uh, 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 well, package, of course. Um, but they make, for instance, a Corbiere, uh, Bordeaux in a, in a can. Um, so why canned wines? Yeah, because, um, well, it cools better, uh, faster. Of course, like I said, it's single serve. So if you don't want to have, uh, don't want to open another bottle of wine, and this is obviously uh, framed on, on other consumers than, than us of professionals here in the, in the room. Um, also transport costs, so environmental reasons, right? Uh, uh, the waste of wine, of course, but also the well, um, the transport costs uh, are effective here. Uh, it's also good uh, to know that a can is possible um, where glass isn't. So if you have events or other things, you can always well carry your wine with you. You can obviously take it everywhere. Uh, you don't have any fuss with uh, well screw uh, screw caps or any any other things. So that's also easy easy doing. Uh, did I forgot one? No. Yeah, well, they're lighter. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and the cans eliminate uh, light and uh, oxygen, but I already told that. Um, so from a marketing perspective, and just to let you know, I'm not a 100% diehard marketeer. Um, I'm also a millennial. Um, I'm an old millennial, uh, I always say. I'm... Uh, uh, well, at the beginning of the move, or, or sort, of, sort of the end, looks how you, how you look to it. But eventually, like everything in the wine business, in, for marketing-wise, it's all about battle of the generations. And if we uh, just look at this little drawing, you see that the head of a baby boomer is different uh, if we look at brands than it is uh, for a millennial. And there are some things, of course, that, that are the same. And this is obviously uh, a drawing from the US, of course. Uh, but eventually, and we don't gonna gonna go, uh, gonna go into very much detail here, 
but of course every generation is different. Um, there is a slide, but that's that's coming later. Uh, this is also something nice to. It's maybe a little bit small for you in the back, but let me just get something uh, something out of here. Um, this is all about um, if you are a brand, what should a millennial or a baby boomer, uh, yeah, think of you? Um, like uh, a millennial really well thinks that you you must be an expert or trustworthy, all all those things. Um, let me, yeah. And just, <coughs> just another uh, sheet to see. Well, if we just saw all those big brands in those uh, heads of those millennials and baby boomers, well, how is it then in the wine industry? Well, eventually, like. We all know, and maybe it's something that uh, well that we don't like. But eventually, the wine industry is, of course, very traditional, family-owned, a lot of rules and regulations. Uh, for instance, uh, that's not wine in a can, but there is also port in a can, and that's port with tonic. And I spoke. That's from uh, from Kraft, and I spoke to that CEO, and he said, "Well, we were really working for one one and a half years to get that." Uh, um, well, in our regulations, because we were not allowed to put uh, port in a can because of the highly, uh, well, of, yeah, the highly high level of regulations in the port in the port industry. Uh, so eventually, and this is all obviously all general, of course, uh, there will be companies that are fast in in innovation, uh, but eventually, yeah, we are all full of traditions, family-owned businesses, which obviously doesn't mean that they are not willing to innovate, but, um, well, there you see a shift, right, uh, with, with chateaus also in France, that there were the, the younger, the son or the daughter, and, well, daddy, well, maybe, uh, well, he will do less in the company, and eventually they, you know, they are going to make the wine, natural wine or other grape varieties, and maybe also some canned wine, so that, that could be something. Uh, here you see a chart of the uh, predictions of canned wine um, until the year 2028, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, and here is also something nice to see, of course, that sparkling wine is one of the largest wines uh, in canned wine, of course. That's also because it's, uh, well, it's better consumed in a can. Uh, red wines is something we see less, but um, at the competition uh, last, uh, yeah, last uh, July, we had quite a few good uh, red ones um, that are obviously, well, good to consume if you just want to have two glasses. Uh, or you... Uh this is a little bit uh, small, I <laughs> uh, but what is on this sheet is, uh, and this is obviously, again, it's, it's in general, what makes millennials different from other generations? Well, they have an increasing uh, interest in wine, and why? Because their parents, were baby boomers, and they were all grown up with the cellar of daddy, with the great wines from Italy, the great wine, the wines from France. So they all sipped and tasted something, uh, and they were really enthusiastic about it. But they were also, in generally, in general, are more on health, so more on environment, uh, and they, yeah, they really want to change the world uh, in, in general. Uh, quality before quantity, mobile activity. So, uh, well, with this pandemic, it's obviously less. But, uh, well, they want to share. They want to have experiences with, with friends, go outside, go hiking. And, well, if you're on the top of the mountain, maybe drink uh, wine or maybe not. Um, recycle. Uh, I also told the recycle, uh, recyclable thing. Um, but also another thing is that they also have a variety of interest in kinds of uh, adult beverages. They also like craft beer, and they also like wine. So well, maybe at four they like a craft beer, and at six when they have a nice steak, they would like to have uh, well a nice red wine uh, with it. And again, this is all general, of course. Uh, so some values, and I'm not going to no, uh, discuss them all, but uh, like I said again, experiences are uh, better than possession. We see that in a lot of other companies too, right? We have, uh, uh, well, Uber and all the, the Netflix things. You don't gonna buy, you're not going to buy any, uh, well, CDs, but you know, you're not going <laughs> to find them anywhere. But a possession is not so, uh, well, it's, it's not so important for them. It's all about experience. They rent cars. They don't. They don't buy cars. Um, and what my previous uh, previous uh, colleagues also said, 
they don't really care, and again, this is in general, but they don't really care how it was done before. Yeah, we're a very good chateau from Bordeaux. Well, that's nice, but is your wine uh, fine for me? Um, yeah, and again, like I said, local, green, socially, okay, they like to, uh, like to share. If you are a brand, what should you do? Well, of course, um, make sure your information is available everywhere. Make a story. Um, get creative. So, um, m m uh, get creative with your samples. Um, get a story behind your brand, but a real story. Things they could really uh, emphasize with. Um, because they, yeah, obviously, like everybody, uh, they would like to be a part of something. Uh, interact, connect. Um, and of course, a lot of brands are, are having uh, those thoughts, but I don't know how, how, well, how your experience is, but there are a lot of big companies in this world that, does, that do not interact or do other things with, with their clients. <coughs> uh, yeah, be authentic, of course, yeah. Create experiences. This is a nice sheet, I think, and this is because not every millennial is the same. Um, like I said, I'm a sort of old millennial. I was born uh, in uh, 1985, uh, uh, and the millennial, uh, well, could, could have a higher range, of course. But eventually, um, well, I'm not, again, I'm not going to do this in detail, but there are some millennials that are really traditional. There are some millennials that are really looking for social uh, progress and other values. So um, if you are going to mar marketing your wine and do your canned wine, uh, of course, you can maybe uh, check one of those segments. Okay, here we have some other things that are uh, uh, yeah, good for, which kind of wines are really uh, good for millennials? Uh, well, of course, the packages, of course. Uh, maybe bag in box, because they, if they have a lot of friends, they would buy a bag in box. If they were alone, they would, they would buy a can. And well, if they were with two, well, maybe they would buy a bottle. Uh, low alcohol wines, sparkling wines, vegan and or, uh, yeah, organic, of course. Um, Authentic grape varieties, fruit forward wines, rosé, uh, yeah, and then eventually a nice scent is, I think, fun, funky, and accessible wines. Uh, not too complex. Uh, yeah. <coughs> uh, that was all about my presentation because, well, like I said in my introduction, it was much longer, but I still want to talk tomorrow. Um, yeah. I would like to know what you uh, all, well, what your experience was about the wines, because well, what do you what do you think of the wines? Yeah. Sorry, uh, do you have a, a slide that shows shows us which wines we have? Like I didn't have the time to write it down. Oh, oh, oh I have them in front of me here. Oh, okay. S so you can make a picture. That's that's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Just yeah. thanks. That's why we're taking. Uh, well, and just some other de uh, <laughs> some other contact details for me. This is me and my two uh, <laughs> two brothers. Uh, the wine can guy. Well, that's that's obviously all about canned wines. And for my blog, and on my blog there are also the interviews with a lot of canned wine producers. That's all on the famous Dutch wine guy. And beneath there you see the information for the social media. Uh, yeah, so thanks. Yeah. It's not about the wines, this specific wine, but uh, I'll tell you my, shortly my story. I'm an uh, Italian producer. And I discussed a few months ago with a, an English customer about a new project for Cannes. So we started. But he asked me, since he, he mentioned an American research where somewhere said some specific variety are excellent for can, and some other absolutely not. I'm really surprised, but maybe you know. You, he recommended Sauvignon Blanc or some other. Can you tell me something? Yeah, like um, if you have... Um if you have wines with very, because it's all about, uh, of course, it's it, the wine is in the can. Um, so you need to think about the layers that are in the can, of course. Um, and for instance, if the wine has a lot of tannins, uh, uh, not in the beginning, uh, but when you have the wine maybe for a few years in there, 
it, it, it could interact with, with that liner that's inside there. Uh, and also, if you have varieties that are uh, in need of oxygen, because it's totally closed, of course, and then eventually, well, the wine will will, yeah, will die, or uh, to be to be dramatic. Um, and it is also, and that's not a sheet that I put in here, but there are also some uh, technical points, like from uh, acidity and all kinds of other things, um, that are really, uh, well, good or not good for in a can. And they can obviously, uh, well, in a laboratory, uh, well, get... Uh, no, no, okay, nee, that, that, that's, that's because of the whole wine, right? Yeah. You will get a microphone in uh, just a minute. I hear I I hear the question, but does when uh, like bag in box you have shelf lives? So what about cans? Well, we can do the test here because some have and some have not. But this one does. This one also. Then let me see here. Mm, no. Mm, yes, and the three here. No, no. So some put it on, some some don't. But eventually, I think it's all uh, uh, the most wines that are in a can are, of course, not to well to hold them for a couple of years. You buy them, then you consume them. Consume them. So I would say a year. That, 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 well, eventually the freshness will will get out of the, will get out of the wine. So maybe a year. That's that's to to be sure. Yep. Oh, it's not on. back um, no because you say that if, if you put in wines with it with tannins uh, and uh, then you you talk about aging and it doesn't ha get the oxygen so uh, why would you do it then yeah I guess um, so that's what you mean by saying uh, certain yes. grape varieties won't match yeah yeah and some blended wines would also not match so what, what would be then for red for example some good varietals well, I have a great, it's not here, but I have tasted the great Beaujolais. It's, uh, it's a Cru from the Beaujolais, Fleury. Uh, it's really nice. It's also uh, from the same, well, let me say wine category. It's, it's a wine, it's a chateau. They make wines in a bottle and now they also can their uh, uh, Fleury. So that's a really, uh, really nice uh, red one for in the can. So fresh. Uh, but then also the vinification is Maceration Carbonique, probably. Uh, yeah, I would say. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Any other questions? Yes, hi, thanks. And um, question about the pressure uh, regarding, because you mentioned sparkling wine, you mentioned uh, maceration carbonic, uh, obviously, what's the idea on the how much pressure can a can withhold? Is there any numbers, figures on that? Uh, yeah, I don't have the figures here by heart. Um, but I would say that, well, eventually, uh, well, not the pressure that we know from champagne or something, right? Because otherwise the, the can will explode, I think. Uh, for this one, the sparkling one, I think it's, it's yeah, I don't know, I don't know the, the figures by heart, but um, there are eventually technical details on that. Because those cans, uh, the, the producers of cans, they know exactly, exactly how much pressure there can, because uh, this, this one is smaller, for instance, but you also have the 330 milliliter can. Uh, so per can, that will be uh, different. But the can producers, they have all the technical details and all the laboratories that will explain that uh, if, you, uh, yeah, if you go in business with them. So I don't have the figures here. <coughs> so just one more question. Uh, what about, uh, well, obviously, you do experience um, wine problems like faults, uh, oxidation, reduction in bottles. Are there anything uh, similar which is caused by the, the packaging by the, let's say, bottling or canning, uh, as you mentioned, uh, when it comes to canned wines, I mean, are there anything you experienced uh, from, your, from your idea in terms of faults, problems? Yeah, well, that's all about the layers then, right? If, you have the, if, if there is a can with bad layers, um, eventually it will... Uh, well, I had some cans at home. I, would, uh, I will not share the brand, of course, but um, eventually... Um, the, well, here at the, at the bottom, it all gets sort of rusty. And I thought, well, what, what is this? What is, what, what's going on? And I think that the, the layer that's inside, uh, well, eventually, uh, well, the wine just eat it, and it, it really came through the, uh, through, through the package. So that's something, uh, well, if you do wine in a can, 
um, well, go to an experienced canning uh, factory, uh, which 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 are obviously are are a few here in the, in the world, uh, which I also do business with. So uh, yeah, eventually, I think that's one one problem. But the other things I didn't uh, well, I didn't experience yet. Thanks.